Did you know that one of these BMW engines was so powerful it had to be detuned from the factory? Well, in today's video, we're breaking down the N52, N54, and N55 engines to help you decide which one is right for you. So let's go ahead and dive straight in. So the N52 engine was produced from the year of 2004 all the way up to 2015. And BMW used this engine in a wide array of vehicles. They used it from their Z4 Roadsters all the way up to their SUVs, to the E90, the E92. It's a very practical engine. And now the N52 is an inline six engine that came in a few different variants. So now the 2.5 liter inline six engine was good for 174 horsepower and about 170 foot pounds of torque. And now this model was usually sold overseas in Europe and internationally. Now in the United States and Canada, that was a bit different because here the 3.0 inline six engine is what was offered. And that's good for 215 horsepower and 199, so basically 200 foot pounds of torque. Now that 3.0 was put into the 328Is. The 330i took that same N52 engine, used DISA valves and a three-stage manifold and a few different tweaks here and there, and was able to get 268 horsepower and 232 foot-pounds of torque. So already you can see the N52 engine is very diverse in its ability to be you know, manipulated in many ways to be more fuel efficient or more powerful. And now this engine was nominated in the top 10 best engines of the year for 2006 to 2007. And that just shows you that the N52 was a great engine. It put power down well, the power band was very smooth and buttery, and it proved to be very reliable over time. And most of the issues that can be found in the N52 engine can honestly be found in most vehicles. The main issues pertain to oil pan leaks, valve cover leaks, ignition coils, spark plugs, maybe your Valtronics motor, I'm talking maybe, it's all very, very common car issues. Those are all issues that you'd have on any vehicle. The only thing specific to BMW in terms of poor reliability, I'd say is the cooling system. The cooling system that's housed within the N52 is leagues better than what was in the prior generation in the E46s. The E46 had an infamously terrible cooling system as to where with the N52 and really all the N5X engines, they up armored and completely upgraded the cooling system. So you have thicker hoses, you have an electric water pump that can now be commanded to give coolant to the systems that need it to cool everything down. Overall, the cooling system is just a lot better. All that to say, you will have to replace everything and do an overhaul at least one time. So at least one time with you owning the car, you should just replace everything in one go. If your radiator goes bad, just bite the bullet, replace all the hoses at once, replace the water pump, replace the thermostat, because once you hit about 130,000 miles, that's when all that stuff starts to go. So just do it all at once, and from there, the engine is bulletproof. It uses a timing chain, not a timing belt, and the N52 really set itself apart because it highlighted all of BMW's new innovations. The engine block was made of a magnesium aluminum composite, and that was specifically chosen because of the reduced weight while maintaining strength. So the engine block was able to be lightweight, but also remain very, very strong and durable. And now internally, this engine brought even more innovations. For those of you who've heard of what Valtronics is, is it's a system that allows for infinite variable valve lifting. And it's used in conjunction with your Vano system to delegate the amount of air that's going in for the combustion process. And this is going to help fuel economy, it's going to help with emissions, it's going to help the throttle response because your throttle body remains in the always open position. And that's a great trait for throttle response because you have the maximum amount of air constantly available and ready to go inside the engine. And so overall, the N52 engine really is an amazing setup if you're a purist or you're an enthusiast or maybe you're somebody who just wants to hop in the car, you want all of the best things that BMW has to offer, but you don't want to have to deal with a huge mechanic bill at the end of every month or maintenance cycle. The only red flags are oil leaks, coolant leaks, things of that nature. And like I said, those can be translated to any vehicle. If you're a DIYer or willing to work on your car, 
the N52 is probably the best setup for you because there's the most DIY videos on it. And on top of that, maintenance isn't going to be through the roof so you can use all the money you save on upgraded car parts and things of that nature like spoilers and exterior modifications and not just spending it on maintenance. And so now that we spoke on BMW's naturally aspirated engine, let's go ahead and get into the infamous N54 engine. And so the N54 engine is something that BMW really took a huge risk on and it paid off for a lot of people. It is a 3.0 inline six engine, but it's not naturally aspirated. It's twin turbocharged. Yes, you heard me right. Twin turbocharged from the factory. Now this engine is an absolute blast to drive. It's good for 300 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque straight from the factory. And that is detuned. Yes, BMW detuned the N54 engine from the factory because the amount of power it could make superseded even that of the M3. And so if you know anything about cars, you know that forced induction is an amazing way to improve fuel economy and create a ton of power. So now BMW took this on steroids. They threw in a twin turbocharged engine into the E90, E92, E93, and the one series, the 135i, and it was the BMW's first time ever throwing a turbocharger into their production model, like high production, high yielding, high manufactured cars. And so basically what this means is they've never put turbos in their vehicles that they just sell at the dealership to regular customers. So they took a huge risk here because this was the first time they put it out for a mass production. It was a blast to drive. It's extremely fun. The car is able to get up to speed so quickly because you have two turbochargers working together and it brings this 3,000, 3,500 pound E92 up to 60 miles an hour in 5.1 seconds. And now all that to say, we're talking 5.1 seconds, 300 foot pounds of torque, 300, you know, horsepower on a stock vehicle this engine is has probably one of the biggest aftermarkets for people who are chasing power with full bolt-on so simple intake tune exhaust and small modifications like that you can bring this engine up to four or five hundred horsepower easily there's actually guides out there that show you that you can modify this N54 engine for $1,500 to $2,000 and bring it up to 500 horsepower at the snap of a finger. So the aftermarket for this engine, especially for performance enthusiasts, is absolutely massive. The fact that BMW put two turbochargers from the factory, detuned it and thought that nobody in the future was going to void their warranty and do all these crazy upgrades is actually kind of hilarious to me because they put in the modern equivalent to the Supra's 2JZ engine. It is an inline six base, so it's extremely reliable. It's well balanced. The power is put down to the wheels very, very, very well. And then you're forcing all of the induction from two turbos into that balanced, smooth engine. And so basically this makes for a crazy fun driving experience because like I said, the car puts power down smoothly. And once you have the boost hit from your turbochargers, it is a wild ride. The N54 engine is basically the engine you want if you wanna take every car you see to Gapplebee's and see other people's headlights in your rear view mirror. It's just so easy to modify. Intercooler intake, exhaust, tune and you're already there nearing four or five hundred horsepower easily snap of a finger but making this much power is definitely going to hurt reliability and reliability is overall where the n54 suffered the n54 albeit like i said extremely powerful could not get a lot of things right the fuel injectors that came in those engines were terrible it took bmw 12 times to finally get it right. Those fuel injectors would have carbon buildup inside of them. You'd have hard starts, you'd have rough idling. You'd have all of these issues because the fuel injectors were just not good. It wasn't until the index 12 injectors that BMW finally was able to get it right. On top of that, having two turbos is going to produce a ton of heat. 
and more heat in the engine bay means everything around the engine, everything around those turbos deteriorates even quicker. So you'd have more oil leaks. The cooling system really would take a hit. You'd have more coolant leaks. People would have boost leaks. There's just so many things that revolve around the N54 and I'm not calling it an unreliable POS. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you have to factor in all of the normal components that the N52 needs replaced. So coils, spark plugs, oil pan, valve cover, cooling system, you know, the, the thermostat, the all the cooling system hoses, the radiator, the electric water pump. You have to factor in all of that now you have to add two turbochargers, index 12 injectors, the high pressure fuel pump. You have to add all these different components that were notorious for going bad. And when you really start to add up all the totals, the cost of ownership here can really start to be crazy. So overall, what I would say is if you're driving the N54 engine, keep it as conservative as possible. You can daily drive your 335i, your 135i, no issues. You can even do a conservative tune, bring it up, I don't know, 350, 400, maybe 400 horsepower. Then yeah, it's a fun setup and just make sure you have some money in your back pocket in case you have turbo issues or fuel injector issues or high pressure fuel pump issues or any of that. So keep that in mind is that it's an amazing engine, but don't expect, you know, utmost reliability from it. And that leads us into the third and final engine setup we're discussing today. And it's basically a hybrid of both of the ones we already talked about. It is the N55 engine. The N55 engine started being produced in 2009 and got used in a ton of BMW's vehicles all the way up to the F chassis. The F30 and the F32, so that's the three and four series, the 335 and 435, both used the N55 engine. And so this is not the same turbocharged engine in the N54 because BMW actually made it a single turbocharged engine. And now that single turbocharger actually has a bigger diameter and it's twin scrolling. So basically what a twin scroll turbocharger is, it's, it's a single turbo housing, so it's one turbo, but it has two channels for exhaust gases to travel through. And basically what this does is it combats the problem of turbo lag and exhaust flow. The turbo is able to spool up a lot quicker and a lot more precise and efficiently than the twin turbo setup of the N54. And so what this does for the N55 is allows it to make its peak boost 100 RPMs quicker than the N54. And now this doesn't sound like a huge sizable difference because it's not power wise, but the thing that it does make a huge difference in is reliability. BMW cut down from two turbos to one while keeping it at that same 300 foot pounds of torque, 300 horsepower, and effectively eliminated half of the heat coming from the engine in regards to turbochargers. So you have less heat going through the engine now. The turbo is able to put its boost out quicker than the N54. And overall, they up armored a lot of different components on the N55 engine. The N55 had all of the fuel injector issues solved that the N54 could never get right. The high pressure fuel pump, that's another thing that got addressed and fixed. You've already cut down on a high pressure fuel pump, that's $1,000. You've already cut down on the index 12 injectors, needing to replace those on the N54, that's another 3K. So you've already saved four or $5,000 just by opting for the N55 engine over the N54. And it's still an extremely fun engine setup because yes, you only have one turbocharger, but again, it's able to reach that peak boost faster than the N54. So this gives you a fun platform that you can still tune up to four or 500 horsepower safely and drive around with more peace of mind. Now the difference between the N54 and N55 power wise is that the N55 can't get up as high as the N54 on stock internals. So the N55 does not have the forged bottom end that the N54 has. 
And so because of that on stock internals, you're not gonna be able to bring this thing up to 700 horsepower safely. That's definitely gonna be a huge liability both ways if you do it to either engine. But for those of you chasing the absolute most peak power, the N55 is not going to quite get there. It's going to be pretty similar, but it's going to be a lot more reliable. It's basically a hybrid of what the naturally aspirated N52 brought to the table, but then it also gives you the forced induction from the N54 and gives you that fun driving experience and potential to you know mod this thing up and tune it and do things of that nature. And it's for a reason that they used it and the F chassis. If the N54 was significantly better, then you would see the 435i having that engine set up. But practicality wise, it just wasn't better. The N55 was the way to go because it's the most balanced of all of the engine setups while giving you some extra fun in that single twin scroll turbocharger. And so I know this is a lot of information to take in and it could be hard to decide which one should you get. I'm going to make it as clear as mud. If you're somebody that wants to hop in your car and take advantage of the best that BMW has to offer, the nice you know, sound system, the smooth buttery drivetrain, everything of that nature, and you don't wanna stay stuck in a shop, you wanna spend some of that extra money you save on maintenance, on aftermarket upgrades and coilovers, you just want a fun spirited drive. Maybe you're a college kid, or even if you're just a purist, an enthusiast, then the N52 honestly is going to be the engine you want. If you're trying to chase the most power as possible, you want a track beast to send everyone on the street to Gapplebee's. You want to go stage two, full bolt-on, everything. You want to see every set of headlights on the road in your rear view mirror, but you have a second car to commute around and it's not your primary mode of transport, the N54 is for you. And even then, you can daily drive the N54, zero issues at all. I only say this because when people think of the N54, they immediately want to go get all the craziest upgrades. So if you keep your tune conservative and you stay at around 400, you know, whatever horsepower, you can have a great time in your N54 and not have it be a piling heap. So overall, the N55 engine is a hybrid of both of that. You're getting great power potential while still keeping the reliability aspect intact. If you just put like a couple thousand dollars off to the side, just in case, just in case worst case scenario, your turbo, you know, hits the hay, then you should be safe because these fuel injectors were fixed. The high pressure fuel pump was fixed. So you're getting the power potential and a fun, fun car that still keeps its reliability. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I would absolutely love to hear what you guys have to say down below in the comments. Make it a battlefield out there. I want you to make the comment section a war zone. I want everyone down there to comment which engine you prefer, which one have you had experiences with that were good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.